This is the first video in our series on Boolean algebra. In this video, we look at how to define Boolean problems using Boolean logic. So computers use binary for calculations and logic. Binary values can represent whether a statement is either true or false. For example, A equals six is a statement which will either be true or false. One of the main reasons for using binary is it's easy to build electronic circuits with just two states. It's also easier to store data with two states, for example, voltage or no voltage in RAM, polarity on hard disks and pits and LANs on optical media. When a state is either true or false, it's known as Boolean, named after George Boole, who proposed an approach to logic known as Boolean algebra. Computer circuitry is built using this Boolean logic and logic gates. In Boolean logic, an input or variable is either zero or one. Inputs are assigned letters to represent them, such as A, B or C. Depending on the logic applied, the output will also be zero or one. To define problems using Boolean algebra, we use special symbols that make expressions easier to write. So there are four pieces of Boolean logic which you specifically need to know about for the exam. Others do exist. The first is not. And in the second column here, you see the symbol which OCR will use to describe not. Not is negation. It basically reverses the input. So if A is zero, the output is one. And if A is one, the output is zero. Now the next column is showing you that there is not one standard symbol for the representation of not in Boolean logic. So all of these symbols here also represent not. Now it's important you're aware of those and if you use any of those in your exam you'll get the marks. So four marks will be given for all of the definitions shown on the right hand column. But the big symbol on the left is the one that OCR will use and the one you'll see in OCR exams and textbooks. The next piece of Boolean logic you need to be aware of is AND, and that's shown by this kind of carrot or mountain style symbol. It's also known as conjunction. So with AND, if A and B are one, so if both the inputs are one or true, the output is one or true. Otherwise, the output is zero or false. And again, there's some alternative symbols which are also used to represent AND. The next piece of Boolean logic you need to be aware of is OR. So this is the reverse symbol for AND, it's like a V. This is also known as disjunction. So with OR, if either A or B are one or true, then the output is one or true. Otherwise the output is zero or false. And again, we've got the alternative representations of OR. And the last one you need to know about for the exam is XOR. So that's the OR symbol with a horizontal straight line at the base. This is known as exclusive disjunction. So this is similar to all with an important difference. If either the inputs A or B are one or true, but not the other, the output is one or true. Otherwise the output is zero or false. And again, we have some alternative symbols which can be used to represent X or. So we've got a little trick here for helping you remember the various different symbols. So you can see here that if we take the symbol for not, it fits nicely into either side of a capital letter T. So that's one way you could use to remember which symbol is used to represent not. And is nice and simple. You can think of it as the top part of a capital letter A or indeed the entire capital letter A. Or is a bit trickier, but if you imagine turning it on its side and writing a capital R, it fits neatly into the right hand side of the R. And finally, XOR is exactly the same, apart from we've got a large straight line at the base, which can be represented by the capital X.
So you need to be familiar with these symbols for your exam so you can interpret Boolean expressions that contain them and also write and define Boolean expressions using them. Now using this notation, it's possible to quickly build complex expressions in a very compact way. We can also use brackets to group various parts of expression, just like you would with a standard mathematical expression. One additional symbol you should be aware of is what we know as equivalence. This looks like a triple equals. It means the same as. And again, it has a couple of alternative notations based on a double headed arrow. So having watched this video, you should be able to answer the following key question. What do we mean by Boolean logic and how can we use it to define problems? So just before we end this video, we want to make you aware of our freely available Boolean algebra cheat sheet. This is a double sided cheat sheet that comes in A4 or A3 version, which can be used as posters. And it covers all the information on Boolean algebra, the various logic gates, truth tables, definitions, and a lot more material will be going over in future videos, all in one handy double sided sheet. You can find this over at student.craigandave.org. Just scroll down to where it says A level revision. If you select that, you will see OCR A-Level Revision, including a whole bunch of free resources, including these cheat sheets. You can click download, no subscription or logins required, and you'll get access to this cheat sheet.